Hey guys, what's going on? Sync here. Um, I'm here doing my first tutorial ever. It's going to be on my 2D as a sort of thank you for 250 subscribers. It's going to be a pretty simple tutorial on this animation which I've used in my Introducing Hiatus IS episode. So as you see, it's pretty simple. It's just a lot of scaling and simple animation with keyframes. All right. So let's go through this. I'm going to start making new comp. Whatever time is okay. First thing you want to do is um, make a solid. Now, for those that don't use After Effects a lot, um, the hotkey for that is Control Y. And you can make it whatever color you want. I'd suggest making it white just so you can see it without having to make the screen transparent. And what we want to make with this is the starting circle here. So what we're going to do is hold, click and hold on the uh, masking tool, choose the ellipse tool, and then while holding, sh oh, select the layer first, then while holding shift and control, drag out until you have a circle. And, okay, then you can add whatever you fill you want to it. And just effects and presets while this comes up. Hold on. Alright. So fill. This is one of the effect that is literally going to be the one of the best effects for 2D. Now I'm just going to open this up. No, that's wrong one. And see what color I use. So I'm just going to copy that fill onto here. Now I'm going to duplicate this layer. Actually, no, I'm not going to do that yet. I'm going to delete the layer. I'm going to go about um, 20 frames forwards. By the way, the um, shortcut for that is Control Shift and using the arrows that gives uh, brings you forward 10 frames each time. I'm going to keyframe the scale, go back to the start, and put it down to zero. So now we get this little thing where the animation pops up. What I'm going to want to do then is duplicate this to make the inner circle that I have here. So what I'm going to do is just change the color on this one. Let's get the hex from get the fill from there. So now I have these two things. But as you see, it, the difference the different sizes, and I've already correct um, keyframed the scale, so it's going to be very difficult to just decrease this and do it for every um, animation. So what I'm going to do is just search up transform, which is another one, a crucial um, animation tip, and use that to decrease the scale here until I have about what I want. Let's see how much I had it. Okay, so that looks just about right. So now we have these two things which animate in Gonna quickly, you can see that looks like a normal, good speed. Um, how I think what I had is that, yep, there's a bit of a delay with the second one. So once this reaches here, I want the second one to start animating. So we have this sort of effect. Another thing I did was after the keyframe. I'm just going to increase that to 102 and do the same for this one. 20 frames after that I've put it back down to 100 so it gives the effect of or sort of bounce where it um, it's not it's the full um, scale and it goes back to about 100%. So that's what we get and as you can see now it will be big and then slowly slow down and become smaller. It's so actually just going to drag out these keyframes to make it a bit longer. You want this to have be at least as long as this starting keyframe. Not short, sure. otherwise it's going to look really weird. Alright, so now looking at this, it's exactly what I did. But what I also had was this sort of border, which made it look like it was um, sewn on. 
It's a simple thing I did as well. I duplicated the layer and used a an effect called Vegas. And you just drag that on, and you can choose the mask path. Yeah. So I mask path. I'm gonna. Yeah, there we go. That looks pretty good. Even. Um. It's gonna increase the width a little bit. Hardness, I want that at hard one. And change the color to a simple white. I think I want. Yeah, that's. Oh, actually, that was good. Start. So I'm just gonna have 25 seconds. Looks about right. But what I did here too was I had it slightly inward. So what you can do is the exact same thing as did before. Get transform. Actually no, I already have transform on that layer. And just make it slightly bigger. Hold on. Actually I don't want this on the um, image mask because it's going to be on the outside ring. I want it on the image contours. There we go. And then what I'm going to do is just slightly increase the scale of this one until I have about what I want. Look, that looks good. And copy the same Vegas onto the duplicate version of the bottom blue layer. I have that and transform this one and make it slightly bigger as well. So what we have there is that sort of look of that. But also keyframe the rotation on that. So it's going to go to the start. I'm just going to keyframe the rotation of Vegas. Go to the end and for this one I'm just going to make it positive and make it about 250. So we get a. Let's check that out. Yeah, that's pretty good. I'm going to do the same for these. Keyframe the rotation. And except for instead of doing 250, I'm just going to make it negative 250. So we have a sort of counteracting forces type thing where one spins one way and the other spins the other. Hello. Okay, that looks. I'm not sure what's going on there. Maybe. It is. Okay. Try doing that again. Put it back down to zero. Rotation. Negative two thirty hundred. Oh no, I realized what I did wrong. Sorry. It's keyframing the transform rotation, not Vegas. Let's start. End. Negative two fifty. Yep, and so what we get is this sort of counteracting forces where one spins one way and the other spins the other. So I believe that would be our starting animation part done. And now what we have to add is our text. So I'm just going to make it the same sync presents. Let's bring up sync. Alright, being a bit slow there. Come on. Okay, I think I've got. Yeah, there we go. Change that back down to zero. It's going to close all these layers. And scale that to what I want. It's a bit 
to mark spot dry for the top line. Looks pretty good. So now the effect that we wanted was that the text comes from about the center of the circle, which means we are gonna gonna have to change the anchor point of it and position center that in the middle of the circle, and then you can change the anchor point until you have the position that you want. There's your y axis and your x axis that you can change it on. It's gonna duplicate that and change it to presents. I'm just going to actually use transform for this one because I'm going to animate it in a moment. And scale that down. Let's check what the anchor point is. Anchor point's good. So I'm just going to... There we go. It's good enough. Okay, so we want it to start animating in about when that finishes. It's going to highlight both of them. Scale. Let's drag those keyframes forward a little bit. It's about a second. And set them both down to zero. So what we have now is that the text comes in. But we also want a buffer on this prevent presents text, so we're just going to move that over until we have it about there. So now what we get is this keyframing of they, those things coming in like that. Actually, I'm going to add the same scale effect here, so I'm just going to go another 20. Come on, 20 frames. Put this back down to 423 uh, and do the same for this one. Come on. Why after effects? Okay, there we go. 423 and there we go we have the same effect where it just sort of comes in and slowly decreases a bit in scale now I think what I had it here as well was that the text had a bit of a drop shadow so what we're gonna it's quite a simple thing to do it's a lot easier than people think I think I use a different font for this Hold on. Anyway, um, what you have to do for that is just simply pre-compose what you have. Go to uh, layer, layer, pre-compose, move all attributes to the new comp composition. Then duplicate your text. Make this one slightly larger. You can. Um, I'm going to use transform for this because I don't want to mess up those keyframes. This one. Slightly larger. Change the fill to a black. Reposition it just a little bit. Then, to give it that sort of shadow feeling, you want to add Gaussian Blur to the bottom layer and change it to about 20 horizontal looks. Best, change the opacity to about 25. Say. And there you get that sort of drop shadow, drop shadow look. Do the same for this one. Duplicate. How much to increase the scale with on this one? 107, so another 7%. 58. That looks a bit too much. Reposition. Add Gaussian Blur, change that to 20, or 
it's on tall. Gee, that's a pretty cool effect. Fill. Drag that on and make it black. So now we know. Now we can close down these pre-comps and well, we've got to make the opacity of this 25. There we go. So we have a bit of a drop shadow effect going on. Nothing too major. Just so we can see what's going on. So decrease the scale a little bit. There we go. Change the position. Okay. So now we have pretty much the entire animation and what we want. But if we RAM preview this, we'll see that it well it looks pretty good, it's not smooth at all. So what we want to do to smoothen this up is highlight all the keyframes and all the pre-comps as well. And press F9 to easy ease them. What this will do is that once the animation approaches the keyframe, it will slow down and then speed up back up again until the next keyframe, which gives you a much smoother effect. But it did also want to inc increase the speed with the, which this scales. Let's do that quickly. We'll say easy, easy, easy. And there we go. We have our nice little animation. Looks pretty similar to what I had. I might have had different times for my keyframes, but it looks pretty much exactly the same. One last thing before I finish off this tutorial will be to will be the most important of it since right now you can pause at one of these still frames and it's still the same normal thing gonna wanna enable motion blur here highlight all the layers and then enable it for there so what we'll do is the more it moves and scales it will be blurred just wanna do the exact same in here And there we go. Now we have a final simple animation with just motion blur, extremely simple scaling, and a clean, nice little animation. So that's it for me. Um, I think I did add one more thing here where I reversed all the keyframes. Just gonna close that down. I reversed all the keyframes and put some things in reverse so I could add more text to it. I then also motion tracked this, which if I can do in another tutorial if you'd like me to, just post in the comments saying that you want a tutorial on motion tracking these 2D animations and just general motion tracking, including things like elements. I can do all of that. Anyway. That's it. Um, thank you for 250 subscribers. Bye.